laugh, laugh at everything they say. It makes them feel superior. <clears throat> why do they have to feel superior? You're gonna sit there and pretend you don't know why. When I first encountered this play, I could relate to Willetta in a sense that I was in my 40s, a jobbing actor for over a couple of decades, had had some breakthroughs in my career, but there was always this kind of invisible wall in terms of opportunity. Oh, no, 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 don't let the white man know that. They don't like us to go to school. Willetta Mayer is a middle-aged black actress who's based in New York. Oh, no. They want us to be naturals, you know. Just born with the gift. She has done really, really well on the sort of black-led circuit. Of course, they want you to be experienced, too. But there's a glass ceiling in terms of how far she's expected to go simply because of her ethnicity. Tell them that you were in the last revival of Porgy and Bess. I'm a little young for that. Oh, they won't know the difference. Yeah, they don't, they keep going. <laughs> At the start of the play, she has this opportunity to be in a cast that is integrated. Greetings to New York's finest. Oh, and in her mind at the start of the play, it's an opportunity for her to show her incredible talent and be respected on the same level as her white counterparts. Now, Miss Green said that the third act does not justify the first. Chaos in Belleville, which is the play within the play, is actually speaking about the bigger topics that are happening in America, right? Voter suppression, violence against black bodies. Yeah. But the irony of it is that these big, important subjects that we need to be talking about are being spoken through the white lens. So we have the white director, the white producer, the white writer. I thought, I thought she might be right. Make me a solemn promise. Don't start thinking. I really could <laughs> relate to this woman of, this, of a similar age who was struggling with those same dynamics, going into casts and companies where either we're looking at issues to do with ethnicity directly in the stories, but still you don't necessarily feel held in that space. You don't really, that maybe the people directing or producing it aren't necessary, they don't fundamentally understand the, the journeys of the main protagonist. I think that there was so many discussions going into this rehearsal and the audition process and all of that, that we're gonna be going into uncomfortable territory. We're gonna be looking at things that are gonna make you question actually the way that you view the world. Mm -hmm. And actually we're gonna to have to name certain things that happen in the rehearsal room that might be awkward, whatever, whatever. Our company right now that we're with are so open to I know. these. They're so I good. mean, we have such a chilled, lovely, supportive company that are not at all defensive. I feel so privileged that we're in such a great open room, mm -hmm. but it's not like that everywhere else. No. And I think actually, <laughs> not even like that in a lot of rehearsal rooms. So yeah. again, we find ourselves really lucky in this situation. It's, it's a really joyful rehearsal room. <laughs>